Today we're going to skin and prep a pheasant for mounting. By the time we're done, we'll have completely fleshed and this bird will be ready for mounting. First, we locate the breastbone. In front of the breastbone, we'll make a cut following the breastbone all the way down to within about three quarters of an inch of the anus. We're going to make that cut. I always have borax to keep my hands dry. We're going to separate the skin from the meat. And 90% of the time, all I use is my fingers to do this. We're going to bring the leg bone out where the leg bone connects to the thigh. We're going to use the side cutters. We're going to snap, cut that leg bone right below the joint. As I don't like the joint to be on my leg bone when I'm mounting the bird, we're going to push the leg bone out of the body. We're going to use a knife to cut the meat to separate the leg bone completely from the thigh bone. Since there's so much meat on the leg bone of a pheasant, I'm going to remove most of this meat at this time so it doesn't cause problems while I'm skinning the rest of the bird. We get the skin down as close to the ankle as we can. We take a knife, run right along the leg bone, separate those tendons from the leg bone, pull them down. I pull them over the joint so that my joint's free. At this time, I'll cut them tendons off with the side cutters. I'll repeat the process with the other part of the leg. Now one part I forgot to show you, I'll show you on the other side. We're going to do the same, same procedure. We're going to separate that. We're going to cut that bone off. If you, need to if you need to take measurements or stencil, but pay very close shape attention to how big and what shape that leg bone is or meat is because you're going to need to replace that later when we go to mount this bird. If you need, you can make a stencil of it. I've done thousands of pheasants. I know approximately what size they are and that's on a commercial mount that's what I use. If you're going to go to a competition mount or something like that you're going to want to be more precise. This bird's just a commercial sanding bird. I can't put competition time for competition mount into it. As stated in all my videos Efficiency and time are your biggest allies in commercial taxidermy. And these videos are strictly commercial taxidermy. Their both leg bones are down. There's your thigh bones. Now we're going to separate the tail from the body. Very carefully skinning down. This part you have to use a scalpel. Good sharp scalpel to get down to that tailbone. Very carefully. Right there's where the tailbone connects to the body right above the anus. I'm just going to break it away with my hands. I'm going to skin down the back and the sides using, my, using only my dry hands. 
I'm going to push down. Right here is the base of the neck. That's where I'm going to quit pushing. I'm going to turn the bird over. I'm going to work the breast down to the base of the neck. Right there is the base of the neck and the crop. Now we have the wing bones to disengage. We're going to very carefully cut. We're going to cut right into the joint where the wing bone connects to the body. We're going to disengage that wing, that joint to look like that when you're done, finished. We're going to turn it over. We're going to repeat the process on the other side. Now we've got both wing bones loose. Now we're going to work it down. I'm going to remove the crop, get that out of my way. Carefully work that neck down. Now I'm going to put my bird in the borax. I keep more borax in the door here, right below my workbench, so I can keep it really dry. We're going to very carefully, with our fingers and our thumbs, work that head over. Now make sure the head is straight with the body and it wasn't twisted when you start coming through. We're very carefully just going to keep working that head over that skull. This is time consuming. If you make a mistake, you're going to split the skin right up here and it's going to have to be repaired later. You don't want to do that. Right now, I just got to the point to where it's going to slide over the skull. There, now the skin went over the skull. Now we're going to use our scalpel. And we're going to very carefully go right through. This is where the ear connected to the skull. So we cut one ear loose. We're going to flip it over. We're going to repeat the process on the other side. And again, this is something you're going to have to do a few times to get the feel for. Find some birds, practice as much as you can to get used to doing these moves. Now we got both ears cut loose. We're going to keep skinning forward till we get to the eyes. Right now I'm at the edge of the eye socket. I'm going to make sure I keep pulling on the skin. Keep it tight and I'm going to cut down into that eye socket. I'm going to work both sides forward at the same time so that I don't pull and tear the skin. Being careful not to cut the eyelid. Now if you paid attention, you'll know that the bill, where approximately it lays in front of the eyes, is probably a quarter inch. I'm at the edge of the bill right now. I can see the bill. I'm going to quit skinning, as I do not want to rip the hide away from the bill. I've got my eyes out. I'm going to sever the neck from the back of the skull. I'm going to lay the body aside so that we can measure it later or make one to use. At this point, I'm going to start by cleaning the skull up, removing the eyeballs. I'm not going to talk while I do that because they have exploded on me before.
Eyeballs move, there's a bone, connects right at the corner of the mouth. I cut that on both sides. I cut right behind the eyelids to try to remove the ear socket. I try to leave the bottom jaw attached to the skull right here at the back of the skull. It makes positioning the head and the mouth easier at a later time. Now if you cut through them and break them off, it's not a total loss. It can still be used later. And we'll go through that in different at a different time if it was were to break. I go right up inside and this is all practice again. Start removing all the meat, the tongue from the jaws and the complete skull. Now I like to leave the back of my skull connected. I don't like to cut a hole in the back to remove the brain. Some people cut their hole back here, take the brain out. I go right up in between the jaw plates and very carefully so I don't poke through and hit my ham. I'll break that inner skull and I'll bring the brains out with the scissors from inside that skull. I'll use a knife to scrape the membranes and the meat off the skull. with my finger, try to replace and push out any brain that I can. And as you do that, that meat will dry up, it'll scrape off the bone easier. But you want to have a nice clean skull before we proceed. Got the skull fairly clean. I'm going to start on the head from about an inch behind the ears and I'm going to very carefully try to grab them membranes and that meat and peel it forward to the ears. Now if I tried to pull it through the ears I'm going to tear the ears, so I'm going to very carefully cut all that membrane away from the, in the inner ear away, right down to the skin with my little four inch scissors is what I use. It's got about a two inch pair of blades on it. Repeat step on the other side. Now you got your quarter inch opening of the ear right there. Now I'll try to peel some more of that meat forward. Looks like I had a BB hole on the top of the head on this one. Now 
Now when I get around where the wattles were, and if you pay attention on the outside of your rooster head, there's, there's wattles. I'm going to just start trimming all that meat up very carefully with the scissors. Down to the skin. I'm going to go around the eyelid. Get all the excess inner eyelid off. I want just the outer eyelid and hair left, feathers left. There's that eye done. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. If we got a finger underneath pushing it out to hold things tight when I'm trimming. My fingers right below where my scissors are running at all times. Keeping everything tight. The skin must be tight in order to trim the excess well, fat and meat off of the heads. Whenever you're doing any trimming of fat and meat, you want skin to be tight, just like you were to put it over a fleshing beam. There, that's the head. I'll do a little more work with that on the grinder when we get to the grinder fleshing it. I'll, do, I'll run the grinder over the skull at that point. Got a little bit of brain down in here yet I'm trying to get out. That being finished, we're going to go back to the back legs. We're going to invert those completely through so we can see the bones. Now this one, when I cut it off, I got a very sharp piece on top here that's going to poke right into my hand if I don't be very careful. These bones can cut, they get jagged edges. You want to be very careful when working around a cut bone. I use the back of my bladed knife. Scrape any excess meat off that bone. We will repeat the process on the other bone using my thumb and the knife. And completely clean that bone up. At this point, we're gonna remove the tailbone. As we cut it off close to the body, there's probably an inch of tailbone in there or so that needs to be removed. We're going to very carefully peel that skin. All the way down, we're going to use a scalpel to do the last quarter inch or so. We're going to get right down about three-eighths of an inch on those quills. This is all quills up in here with the tailbone attached. All this tailbone is going to be removed. At this point you take a knife, you make a V cut on both sides. You'll separate that, you just bend that tailbone down and it should pop right out for you. This time I'll take a knife, I'll cut down into them quills. Don't cut the quills, just cut the meat to the quills. Use the knife. And peel the meat off. Now you have the quills. They're about three eighths of an inch long. I'm going to use my scissors. I'm going to trim all this excess meat off around the anus. Very carefully, because this is probably the most tender part of the bird.
gouge that meat off. I'm going to use my fingers and the knife. Actually, I'm going to take the point of the knife and I'm going to go in between each quill. Just point, just poke that knife between each quill and break them apart so that that meat separates some quills. There's more to be scraped off at this point. I like them fairly clean before I go on. And I, at that point you can see all the separations of the quills. Now we got the wings to remove. I'm going to show you two different types of wings. Procedures. First one will be the one I use all the time. The second one will be actually be the one that I use probably the first 10 years of business. It's the easier part of removing the meat. But it's the harder part when it comes to the mounting process. I'd rather spend more time now and less time later. Right now I'm just working the skin down. As you remember, there's your anatomy should show you there's three sets of bones on a wing. You got your ulna, then there's a two sets of bones in here. These two sets is where we have to clean the meat out. This third joint here. That little bit of meat will dry and hold everything in place. Study your anatomy of the bird and you'll, you'll learn all three sets of bones. Your big, big birds, you have to remove that third set of meat. We'll take care of that in a video doing a turkey or a swan sometime. We'll show you that process with these little your little ducks, your pheasants, there's not enough in there to make the cut. Right now I'm working the skin down over this first joint. I'm going to break it over the joint a little bit. Open that up a little. I'm going to remove this meat from this first bone. Make a cut right below the joint of the bone. I'm going to separate that joint off of that bone. I don't want that joint to be in my way later. There again, be careful because there's some sharp edges whenever you cut a bone. Now we're going to work the skin leaving the skin connected to the backbone of these two. It'll come off the front bone. Right at this joint, we're going to make a careful cut to cut those tendons away from that side. We're going to repeat the process on the back side. That's separated all the tendons. Now we're going to use those tendons and that meat. We're going to work this skin down further yet to the next joint. And as I said, this is you have to be careful doing this. You have to get all these tendons pulled. If you're not careful, you're going to end up ripping this wing right here. And it still happens to me even after 28 years. Occasionally, I'll get one. But most times, I can pull that tendon down. I can open the bone up. I can use my fingers or a knife. Whatever I need to peel that meat down to that joint. Keeping my fingers dry in the borax. The borax helps to clean the bone up. Once I'm down to that joint, I'm going to take scalp and I'm very carefully going to cut all them tendons away from that joint. There's what a finished bone joint looks like. 
is still connected. Meat's all cleaned out here. Meat's all cleaned off here. Most of the meat off the joint is cleaned off. You're going to have some little bits hanging on that's got to hold the joint together. We're going to flip it over. We're going to repeat the process on the other wing. This wing we're going to do a little different. We're going to give you two perspectives on removing the meat and cleaning up the wing. This is, this is the method I was taught when I learned 28 years ago. It is not the method I use today, but it is the easier method of cleaning and fleshing a bird and preparing it for mounting. But as I said earlier, this method makes the mounting process a little bit harder, especially in flying birds. You got it down to the first joint. I'm going to take the back side of my knife and I'm going to separate those feathers from that bone. On the other side we left them connected, this side we're going to separate them down. We're going to push it all the way down. You don't have that chance of ripping the skin like you did on the other side. At this point we're going to remove all tendons and meat in both sets of, joints, both sets of bones. We're going to cut the ball socket off just as we did the other side, same way. We're going to cut these tendons just like we did the other side but it's going to be easier to clean the bones off because we got wide open. We don't have to use the tendons to work them down anymore. We just pull them loose, pull them all the way down, trim them off. I use my knife and scrape any excess meat and pieces off that I can get off. Scalpel, scissors, whatever you find handy for getting it off. Now I'm going to run my fingers over. I'm going to pull some of the real loose chunks of fat and skin and meat off with my fingers before we go to the grinder to flesh this bird. These parts can be taken off with a grinder, but it gives more chance for the grinder to catch them. I just very carefully remove them. bird this is what it looks like before I'm going to take it to the grinder this is the two wing you can see this wing you've got completely stripped off this wing we left the skin attached the reason I like to leave it attached is that way these feathers are all in the right position in the right place when we go to position them later during the mounting process I've removed most of the excess material at this point. At this point, we can take it to the grinder using a fine wire wheel and take the rest of the flesh up. We're using a fine wire wheel on a six inch bench grinder. When you put your wheel on, you always want to make sure as you're using your wheel, the, the steel happens to bend one way, you want to make sure that that bend is working the same way all the time. The bend goes this way and the wheel goes this way. That's to make sure that it doesn't push into your skin and tear it. When I flesh a bird, I start right in the wing area and work my way towards the head. And then I move back to the tail and go to the wing area. I always move from the back of the bird to the front because that's the way the feather quills lay and the wire wheel will catch the feather quills and go backwards. 
pheasants are probably one of the easiest things to flex that there is, but you still have to be careful. Get the feel for it, take that fat off, just keep moving, keep your bird moving at all times. Don't stop the bird, just lightly touch the thing and move it past the wheel. If you stop the wheel on it, you're going to tear right through the skin. I spend more time right on the feather quills. You'll learn of upland game such as pheasants, grouse, quail. There's three lines of feathers. You've got one line here, one line here, and one line here. In between is just skin. And it'll tear, tear fairly easy. So in between the feather quills you can Put a little more pressure on the quills than you can on the skin. For all practical purposes, a pheasant is one of the easiest birds to learn the art of skinning and fleshing on. It's the bird I would spend the most time on for skinning and fleshing. Mounting. They're a little tougher position because of those feather lines. And you have to have a little more rest. You have to have good reference on a pheasant because there's a lot of problems that can arise by the different shapes. With any taxidermy projects, reference and knowledge of the animal you're working with is very important. anymore you don't see a lot of reference laying around my shop I've been at it for, in the business for 28 years I go a lot by memory now but when I first started I used a lot of reference and I suggest you use a lot of reference you get up around the head area you have to be more careful but you still want to run your brush over the head area to get the little bits out that we couldn't pull off. Now we've got everything worked from the wings forward. Pretty much as clean as they need to be. I'll go back over a couple spots I missed a little. Very easy to see what's clean and not clean. The more of the meat, the more of the membrane you get off, the better your mount's going to be later when you do it. Now I'm going to move back around the anus and the tail area. It's probably the most tender spot on the bird. So we'll take a little more caution back here. careful not to let the wire wheel catch them feathers. Right by the leg there's a big pile of quills that you need to flesh out, open up. by removing them membranes between the quills so carefully is when you position them quills they'll have more tendency to stay where you position them and pin them during the mounting process and drying process where you don't get that meat and fat out when they dry they'll move them quills and you get feathers that'll be out of place plus you could get bug problems that want to eat that meat in there Process on the other side. 
as with anything in taxidermy, and your whatever you use for a pattern to work on, I do the same every time. I've, I've got a set procedure I go through. You can change that procedure. It's the final result you're looking for. How you get to the final result is up to you. Just get yourself a pattern going so you remember to do everything on every animal the same. Repetition makes it easier. Now we've got everything done except down the backbone, that line of quill. There again, I'm holding the tail in my hand. Very carefully starting down them quills. spots I've missed, keep going over until I feel happy with what I've got. You can use the wire brush to clean off the bones if you want. Right here is what a clean skin should look like. You've got all your feather quills open, the fat and the grease is gone. You've got your ears, your eyes opened up. The majority of the meat's gone. A little bit more of that we will remove. All them red spots or blood stains, they'll be removed when we wash the bird. The tail quills look nice and clean for you. Separated. That bird is, at this point, can either be put back in the freezer, which I'm going to do, or it can be mounted, which will be the next step. I like to skin all my birds at one time, refreeze them, then they're ready to mount. When I pull them out, I can just thaw them out in water and do them. I very carefully reinvert these wings back out so that the feathers don't get messed while they're in the freezer. If you're going to wash that bird right away, you do that in the water. I leave the head tucked in. I just fold the bird up a little bit, leave the tail out, and I'll bag it up and put it back in the freezer. That prepared that bird for mounting. At this time, using a four ply string and wood wool purchased from Van Dyke Supply, I'm gonna re I'm gonna build my own body for this mount. I've used styrofoam bodies bought from any of the supply companies before. They're fine. I can wrap this pheasant body in five to seven minutes when I'm really going at it. Saves me money. Gives me a spot if, since it's not a styrofoam body, especially on, if I was doing waterfowl, especially geese, you'll have fat left and that fat will follow the styrofoam to the lowest point and if you're going to get bleed out, it's going to be at that point. I've seen it on too many mounts, so I stay with the wood wool body. And I've taken this wood wool, I've started with a small spot. Right now I'm trying to recreate my backbone. The shape of my backbone is like this. I'm trying to recreate my backbone shape and size. And that'll be the foundation for my body is my backbone. But there's two reasons I like and the wires will hold better in the Excelsior body, the wood wool body. Now this is wood wool or Excelsior. It's got two different, I've seen it as two different names. I buy this from Van Dykes. Just because it's, Van Dykes is close to me and the shipping is cheap. Cheaper than buying it from Oregon or but they've all got I'm sure they all have the same product but the 
four ply string works better than the 20 ply string. Right now I've got the backbone. I'm bending it. I'm putting a lot of pressure on this when I'm wrapping it. I'm using the string to tighten this up because I don't want a real loose body. I want a fairly solid body when I'm done. There, I got most of my backbone. At this point, I'm going to bring my breastbone. I'm going to make the whole shape of the body like this at this time. I just keep adding little pieces at a time, squeezing it into place, squeezing the shape I want, and using the string. This body method works for all birds. Turkeys, I do use styrofoam because I have not figured out how to make the shape of a turkey out of excelsior. So I do use styrofoam bodies for turkeys. But turkey's pretty much an upland game so I can flesh them to where there's really no possibility of fat ever coming through. Feathers are so long, I suppose if a little does come through a spot underneath, it's catching them. But it'll always be in the tailbone area, where you, bottom of the tailbone, where you get the bleed through. Break the string and just start wrapping her again. As you can see, I'm wrapping all ways on this body. I'm wrapping sideways, lengthways. The string is just to hold it in place, good and tight. Constantly making sure I've got the shape I want. I still need a little bit more down here. One thing to remember, a little bit smaller body is a better thing than a body that's a little bit bigger. Most bird skins will not stretch to accommodate a bigger body. You can tuck a little bit if you're a little smaller. So rule of thumb, smaller is better than bigger. But get it as, get it as close as you can. It will make your bird, finished bird, a whole lot more presentable. Nope, I'm missing just a hair more, right below the thighs. I'll put a little bit more in there. Here again, studying the anatomy of a bird. And we will have anatomy videos on this website. Placement of the wings and all that project. Okay, now we have the main body shape we want. Stands as high. I've got the width I want in the shoulder and the spine. At this point, we're gonna add the two set, two thighs, one on each side. To make sure that our hips are where we want them. Figure out about what you want for Wood wool, put the first side on where it needs to sit. Get it tacked into place with the string. We'll repeat the second side. Don't be alarmed if your first ones don't turn out. You will learn as you go.
There are my bodies. I got the body shape I want. I got the thighs built in where I want them. Overall, I'm perfectly happy with that body. I'm going to break the string off. I'm going to take some masking tape. I'm going to stand that body up. I'm going to go right down the backbone with that masking tape. Wrap all the way around, right straight up to breastbone. And that masking tape gives me the center of my body all the way around. At this point, I'll find a black marking pen and I'll figure out by anatomy for a standing bird where I want my thigh bone. My thigh bone is going to connect right here on the bird which is going to be right here on my body. Rule of thumb is it's back of half point on an upland game bird. Probably more like a third and two thirds. And it ain't halfway up on the body, it's probably two thirds on the top, a third on the bottom. I'm going to go to the other side, I'm going to mark it. That's where your wires for your legs and your wings are going to go in later. The wings I'm going to go up top up here. I'm going to figure out where my wing bone sits. I'm going to put a mark there and a mark there. And we know where the neck goes in. The neck's going to go in right there. There, that body at this point is ready to go. I can discard the mounted body. If I was going to mount this bird right away, I would. Since I'm not, I'll put the person's name right on the, or the bird number right on the deal. I'll lay it aside for future use. That concludes that part of the day.